they are going to make selections on CVs. Selections or rather shortlisting on CVs. So if you have indicated a lot of achievements, what you have done, not that my strong points are honesty, hardworking, sincerity, those things only time will tell. But what have you achieved? What have you done? You have been a rank holder or whether you got some scholarship somewhere, you have attended some important workshops, you have done some vocational training. These are the ones that they look for. What have you done during your time that you're not doing classes? How do you spend your time? Are you using it any constructively? So I have sent some guidelines regarding what to prepare for during the interview. One of the important aspects is very good communication skills. And when you actually communicate, you must look at the camera, you must not look at the screen, look at the camera. It is as good as making eye contact with that person. If you make that eye contact with that person while talking, it has a much bigger impact. But if we look here and look there and look somewhere else, it does not make, it does not have such an impact. So look into the eye and be yourself. That's very important. You have to be very relaxed, confident, not tensed up as if you're going to go to jail. They come Indrajit Moitro. Okay, here he is. We still have 35. So total strength of section C is 38. 38, and there are some withdrawal cadets. One minute. This section C, two are withdrawn. So 36, it should be 38. Another two. Okay, we can start a class. Somebody please tell me where were we? Um, uh, who will tell me? Faran, are you there? Where were we during our last class? Yes, sir. So we'll start cylinder lubrication. Okay, very good. Okay, this is hydrolysis. Oh. We passed all this. Here we finish this cylinder oil. Oh, we finished 28. This is class test section C. Direction abrasives, microbial, coolers also we finished. Plate type we finished. Okay, today we are going to finish this whole chapter and it is up to plate 56. So 35 to 56, we'll finish it. So we were on to cylinder lubrication and I think I finished this page also. Oh, wait a minute, somebody's got a question. Sir, what is pull out maneuver or crash top trial in C trial? Pull out maneuver. Crash top is there. I, I think I've told you what is crash top. See, crash top is an emergency movement. Very, very rare, no doubt, but a very important emergency maneuver. Pull out maneuver means more or less the same, but it's not very commonly used. Crash top is an arrangement wherein pressing of one button on the agency panel will not only stop the engines, it will restart the engines in the opposite direction and it will turn the propeller in the opposite direction. You see, for a ship, when you stop the engines, it doesn't mean the ship will stop. The momentum of the ship will carry it through. And it is a very long distance that it is carried through on its own momentum. So how do you stop that ship? In a crash stop, it means you have to stop it from crashing into something. Maybe another ship, maybe on the land, maybe your steering has failed and you're going headlong into the ship. So that can happen. So to prevent such a crash from happening, you have to stop the ship from movement even if your main engines fail. In other words, when you press that crash, when you press that crash buttons button, first thing, it is, pro it is completely 
computerized. In my time, it was computerized. Can you imagine? This was in 1979. The whole process was computerized. You just have to press the button. After that, the computerization takes care of the whole thing. What happens when you press the button? First and foremost, all the safety cutouts for that main engine are bypassed. In other words, even if the lube oil pressure fails, the engine will not stop. Or uh, it will not follow, it will not it will not stop continuing with the program. You get the point. Idea is engine will restart even if there is no lube oil pressure and it will make that propeller turn in the opposite direction. So it is the faster way of stopping the ship if you can stop the engines and rotate the propeller in the opposite direction. And that is what the entire program is made out by pressing that emergency crash stop button. The whole idea is you have to stop the ship no matter what. And this is achieved by as quickly as possible, the engine is stopped and then it is reversed and then it is engaged with the propeller shaft. You see, when you stop the engine, it doesn't mean the propeller stops. The propeller will keep rotating because the ship is dragging the propeller. The ship on its own momentum is dragging the propeller. So the propeller keeps turning in the di ahead direction. Now you have to stop the engines and then restart the engine on the opposite direction. Now I will tell you a personal experience where we had it. This engine was a medium speed engine and it was a V type. I don't remember if it was inline or V type. So it had a clutch system. I think we did this clutch system in the last semester. This clutch system is immediately disengaged. Moment to disengage the propeller from the engine, the engine stops immediately. But the propeller keeps rotating because the whole momentum of the engine is dragging the propeller. So then once the engine has stopped, it is reversed. It is programmed. You don't have to do anything. It is computerized program and they will do it on the basis of the timing sensors fitted everywhere. So then the engine reverses and then the clutch engages. So momentarily, the engine is rotating in one direction, the propeller is rotating in the opposite direction. So when the clutching happens, there's a lot of heat generated, a lot of smoke generated. They say no spark is supposed to be generated, but I have personally seen some sparks gen being generated because the spark is a hazard. So a lot of smoke is generated. The whole engine room is full of smoke, but there will be no alarms, no fire alarm, nothing. These are bypassed. So there is no safety cutout for engine operation during this crash stop. The whole purpose is to save the ship even at the cost of the machinery. Of course, machinery won't get damaged, but even if it gets damaged, it is not a priority. The priority is saving the ship from crashing into something. And it is justified. Why? Because if you crash and the whole ship after that sinks, what good was it to save your machinery? No good. So the idea is to save the ship from collision, even at the cost of the machinery. That is what is a crash talk. And the program is totally programmed and computer based. And this computer basing was in times of my shipping days. That was in 1979 when we took a brand new ship on delivery. And we had the sea trials. So during sea trials, this crash drop is carried out. Otherwise, it is rare for a ship to have a crash drop out at sea, very rare. It is just an emergency arrangement made to ensure that the ship does not crash into something. And this can happen if the ship is moving at full speed or near full speed and the steering fails. So steering fails completely, even emergency steering fails. So where is the ship going to go? It cannot turn anywhere. So it keeps going, keeps going till it will hit something. So best is to stop it where it can. And this crash top is an arrangement to do this as quickly as possible. Now I'll give you an idea. If you just stop the engines at that speed, that ship, it took us seven nautical miles before it came to a stop. 
and that seven nautical miles was almost 35 to 45 minutes of momentum movement. Now, if you use a crash top to stop it as quickly as possible, you still will need about two nautical miles for that ship to stop. Moment to turn the propeller in the reverse direction, it doesn't mean the ship will immediately stop. The propeller will be still moving in the reverse direction, but the ship will be moving in the ahead direction. But the deceleration will be there. That means it will stop much faster from moving ahead. And then once it stops, it starts moving as turn because the propeller is moving as turn. Jaswal, did you get the gist of it? Shiti Jaswal, did you get some understanding of what I said? Yes, sir. Okay. Maybe your microphone is not in order. Okay, no problem, Shiti. Go ahead. So what we were, where were we? This is not the page. Yeah, cylinder lubrication. I had explained to you why we need lubricating for any machinery. Now, one of the areas that we need lubrication is the cylinder. And for an ordinary layman, the purpose of cylinder lubrication is to reduce friction. But for you as an engineer, there are more reasons than just reducing friction. And those are the six reasons that are written here. So you will need to quote all six reasons if ever you are asked, why do we need cylinder lubrication? The first one is to separate sliding surfaces with an unbroken film of oil. Remember, the concept has to be there that when a piston ring is rubbing against a liner, the ring is not really touching the liner. There is a film of oil between the two if your oil delivery is satisfactory, if your oil quality is satisfactory, if the temperature is satisfactory. There are certain parameters which ensure that the film of oil is adequate and in place. This is one point. The second point is how much thickness will be the oil between the piston ring and the liner? Well, at the highest peak pressures, that means just after combustion, the film thickness on the top piston ring is about three microns. All right. And on the lowest piston ring, it is about 15 microns. This is the minimum thickness of the film that can be there because the gas pressures in the combustion chamber are at their highest. So the gas pressure which goes behind the piston ring pushes the piston ring against the liner. And that causes minimum film thickness of the oil. Now this oil also has to be of a special quality. And this cylinder oil is of a special quality. And a chemical is added in it. It is called extended pressure. To air called EP oils. But we'll deal with this little later. Let us first finish this uh, six points. Otherwise, what happens with every point, as I keep discussing, the subject goes more and more and more. There is no end to it. So let's first finish these six points. So you have understood that there has to be a film of oil between the piston ring and the liner. Okay. Number two, to form an effective seal. So, but how do we ensure the thickness limit? You ensure the thickness limit by adding the correct combustion process, by adding the correct oil, by maintaining the correct temperature. So all these are the parameters which ensure that the oil filmness, film thickness is what it should be. You should, Karthik, you could have asked me, sir, how do we know it is three millimeter, three microns or 15 microns? That is more of a curious question. Now, this modern technology has evolved so much that there are sensors on the liner. Okay, so these sensors on the liner will continuously measure the capacitive strength between the ring and the liner. And that is directly interpreted as the thickness of the oil film. This is one. Then there are other sensors which will continuously measure the rate of wear of the cylinder liner. There again, the sensor thickness ensures a certain capacitance value. Now, each time the ring moves over it, that sensor surface gets worn out, maybe by 0 0.0001 millimeter. 
but but that 0.0001 millimeter is also recorded so every 5 minutes you know what is the wear down of the cylinder liner so that is another sensing device which will continuously monitor the wear down of the liner while it is in operation one there is yet another sensor which is fitted on the liner which will monitor the function of the piston rings how does it do that whether the piston ring is working or not okay now when the piston ring is in contact with the liner and it is moving up and down it is functional all right now if the piston ring breaks anywhere it will be loose it will no longer be making contact with the liner because there will be no spring tension in the piston ring so the piston ring will probably not be touching or if it touches maybe once in a while it touches and it is not really performing a function so you have a sensor there which is capable of measuring a pulse each time the ring passes over the sensor so on a cathode ray oscilloscope you will have a screen which will show pulses in from the wave form so they suppose there are four piston rings so there will be four pulses in at equidistant positions okay now of course after that you can have your computer to record and have a digital display etc but the cathode ray oscilloscope will show you four pulses at equidistant spaces now say number 3 ring is damaged so it will show the first pulse after that the second pulse the third pulse will be missing and then the fourth pulse will be there so that pulse reading is immediately maintained by the computer and you are given an alarm that number 3 piston ring of unit number 5 is defective so you will see for yourself that that particular piston ring is not performing its required function why it is not performing at the functions that is for the engineer to diagnose he will know that the piston ring has either lost its elasticity or it is broken or it has fallen off it is not performing its function so normally with three piston rings you can still continue to run the engine the only fear is if that ring comes out and gets caught in the inlet port edge it will break into pieces and that piece will possibly drop into the scavenge manifold and then when the piston is at the bottom dead center the air which is rushing in will blow that piece of piston ring onto the piston crown so when it is now exhausting that piece may or may not go out of the exhaust passage and find itself in the exhaust manifold so that is how you will sometimes find pieces of piston rings in the exhaust manifold i have found i have inspected the exhaust manifold i was shocked to see a handful of piston ring pieces they have been rounded off possibly they were jumping and beating around on top of the piston crown before they fell out of the exhaust manifold but anyway kartik your question was how to ensure thickness limit to ensure the thickness limit you must put the correct viscosity of the oil you must press the correct quantity of the oil you must have the correct temperatures inside the combustion spaces and you must have adequate combustion of the fuel there should not be any carbon being formed which will come in between the piston rail so the param operating parameters of the engine if they are accurate and correct to the required levels your thickness of oil film will be satisfactory all right but there are now means to measure the film thickness of the piston ring lubrication oil film okay kartik does it answer your question yes sir okay good so next one is number 3 oh sorry number 2 to form an effective seal between liner and rings to avoid blow past of gases now no cylinder liner after some months and years of use is perfectly cylindrical on the inside so when the piston ring is fitted in the piston ring uh, in the on the piston crown the ring does not make 100%, 100 contact on the entire circumference there will be places where the contact is less there will be places where the contact is perfect again when the piston travels up another place will have a gap and the other place which had a gap before will be closed so the 
duty of the piston ring is to try and maintain complete contact to the entire length but this does not happen and there are places where there are gaps between the piston ring and the liner and these gap positions keep changing as the piston goes up or down at different points now this oil helps in providing filling up those spaces and ensuring the integrity of the combustion chamber so when the compression takes place no air will escape past the piston ring but when combustion takes place the combustion pressures are much much more much much more than your compression pressure so that is why they could be blow past all right it helps in reducing the blow past but if the gaps are very large then chances of blow past containment is very low number 3 to neutralize corrosive combustion products and thus protect liner piston rings piston and rings from corrosive attack now first january 2020 our fuel oils have been changed to 0.5% sulfur before that it used to be 3 to 3.5% sulfur so this sulfur when it burns along with the fuel produces lot of acidic gases sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide the gas by itself does will not corrode the liner the gas will mix with the water vapor which is formed during combustion how is this water vapor formed you see fuel is a hydrocarbon it means it has got hydrogen and carbon so when the hydrogen burns with oxygen or combines with oxygen it forms h2o similarly carbon when it combines with oxygen it will form carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide all right now this water vapor which is formed will react with the acidic gases and then you have a vapor condition of acid so this acid has access to the entire liner walls so it will start corroding immediately because the acid is a very strong acid it is not mild so to prevent it you need to have a layer of alkali on the surface walls of the liner so how do you achieve that the best way to achieve it is to have the cylinder oil mixed with the alkali so when the alk when the cylinder oil is spread over the entire surface you have a layer of oil and alkali to combat the acid which will come in contact so thus the cylinder liner is protected okay just a minute just the second please let me have a little water okay i think number 3 point is one of the most important points okay uh to neutralize number 4 to soften deposit and thus prevent wear due to abrasion see sometimes carbon formation during combustion also finds its way into the piston ring pack now the oil which is coming in for lubricating of the piston will also come into contact with these hard crusts crusty particles the moment it gets a little oil it becomes soft so the chances of it becoming hard abrasive is reduced it is not eliminated it is reduced that is why it said to soften deposits and thus prevent wear due to abrasion it prevents but not altogether there will be still some amount of wear and tear through any deposits coming out of the combustion debris number 5 to remove deposits and prevent seizure of piston rings and keep engine clean or rather keep piston rack piston pack clean engine is a huge part i think i should keep uh engine uh, ring pack clean let's make it ring pack r i n g p p Okay. That means that set of piston rings that are there is called a ring pack. If there are six rings, all of them are called a pack of rings. So that ring pack has to be kept clean. Now, every time there is combustion, some amount of combustion debris, some amount of carbon will find its way into the grooves. So this cylinder oil, one of the duties is to keep that space clean by washing out those places. so there is considerable amount of cylinder oil consumption in this process 
only a little bit goes in actually forming the film between the two surfaces most of it goes in keeping or washing and clearing out the deposits that may occur inside the grooves behind the piston rings so the oil leaches there and it sort of washes out so what comes out is absolutely black oil black oil and it is all into the under piston spaces part of the cylinder oil burns out but incompletely in other words the lubricating oil is very difficult to burn as compared to fuel oil so the oil lubricating oil which finds its way in the hottest parts the the vaporized cylinder lube oil will be going outwards okay and along with that will be some amount of carbon formation because the oil does not burn completely lubricating oil so this carbon is called soot so ultimately you have soot deposits in the exhaust gas boiler and since the oil is in the vapor form partly it makes those surfaces a little wet and that is why the soot tends to stick and if it sticks it accumulates so that is why in two stroke engines i had told you that the exhaust pipe will always have a little wetness on its internal walls of the exhaust pipe because the lubricating oil which is fed directly into the liner does not burn completely part of that oil vapor goes out in with, along with the exhaust gases and this is the wet type of exhaust gas so that wetness is seen in the walls of the exhaust pipe around even in your ship if you go up to the funnel which you will rarely do and if you touch the surfaces you will find it's black and wet it is wet it is a cylinder oil vapor that settles on the surface which attracts some amount of the carbon and soot what is soot soot is also carbon but it is a distinction between carbon deposit and soot deposit there is a distinction between the two soot are you know clusters clusters of carbon particles if you blow on it they fly off but a carbon deposit you don't blow it will not move you probably have to need a scraper to move that carbon deposit so the difference between soot and carbon one is a deposit one is a cluster why is it a cluster see each carbon particle is polar in nature what do you mean by polar in nature that means suppose this is a carbon particle one side will be a north pole one side will be a south pole it will be a north pole one will be a south pole so the next piece with the south pole will connect with the north pole so ultimately all the particles will cluster through a magnetic attraction between the components so they form a loose cluster so if you blow on it they may fly as they settle on the soft wet surface they start becoming a deposit so soot can become a carbon deposit over time once the entire pack becomes solidified so that is initially soot is very you know fluffy fluffy in the sense it will fly very light it is not like a deposit okay next is to suffer uh, to remove deposit and prevent piston seizures so during the low piston speed is there boundary lubrication between the liner and rings why will there be boundary lubrication between the piston rings and see boundary lubrication is a condition when you have less oil if you are giving the correct amount of oil there should be no problem but during low piston speed the combustion of fuel is very poor in any diesel engine the rpm has to be in the region of 75% to 85% or the load has to be between 75 if you are going to run on part load condition then the quality of combustion is very poor one thing is the turbocharger is not able to give you the required air second thing is the electric blower you are supplying is only a supplement it doesn't still give you enough air 
so the quality of combustion during slow speed is very poor but boundary lubrication is not going to come in between the liner and the rings if the quantity of oil is satisfactory and this quantity of oil during part load condition will be reduced but it will be there it will never be put to an extent where there will be boundary lubrication then there will be a very rapid wear down of the piston ring and liner boundary lubrication could happen if the supply of oil to any bearing even piston rings is lesser than what is required okay i hope it is reasonably clear it, it no it is not right that at part load speed there is boundary lubrication no it should not be because your oil supply is just what is required okay so the last point what we have here is to cool hot surfaces without burning obviously up one of the functions of lubricating oil for any machine is to cool the surface over here cylinder oil remember is a one time use it means once the oil is consumed and it falls into the under piston space and then from there it is led to the sludge tank or the uh, dirty or any tank which is containing sludge sludge oil tank so it becomes sludge it has to be drained there and i will tell you another thing one of the biggest problems this sludge which accumulates is thick it is sticky or gummy and so long as it is hot it is still fluid moment it cools it becomes like a deposit it will not drain so on board the ship the under piston drain pipes are there and the watch keeper is supposed to be periodically check that it is clear that means you should get some at least some compressed air coming out from there and if that air is coming out then whatever is depositing will also come out but if you open it and find nothing is coming that means the pipe is choked and it is choked means there is going to be accumulation of that sludge at the under piston spaces so be sure at the next stoppage of the ship you will have to open up and clean and after cleaning you will also have to make sure that the drain pipe right to the bottom is clear because if you don't then the entire pipe will have the sludge which is solidified and then it is a problem then it is a problem then you have to start opening the pipes and start clearing the pipe manually and those pipes are not straight pipes they are all wavy crooked and then it goes into the tank so it becomes an additional problem if you don't periodically open that drain pipe to ensure that the passage is clear from the under piston spaces okay sir due to debris cpr what is cpr may also get clogged how can we treat them what is cpr karthik compressor Uh, the grooves that are there on the piston ring, sir, for blow pass. Oh. <coughs> oh, those those rings are different. CPR rings you are talking about. Yes, sir. Oh, those are different. Those are. See what happens. Why should the top piston ring take the full burden of the gas pressure? So to relieve the top piston ring. from maximum pressure part of the pressure is passed on to number 2 ring or sometimes to number 3 ring but usually it is number 1 and 2 number 3 ring does not our number 2 ring will may or may not have the slots on the ring surfaces yes cpr rooms may also get clogged right how do we treat them you treat them or rather you don't need to treat them if you run your engines satisfactorily i told you all the parameters of temperatures pressure flow quality of combustion should be satisfactory and they will not get clogged i have seen pistons after we remove spick can clean as if why then we regret why we opened the piston it is like that if you run your engines well if you keep all the parameters within limits you don't overload your engine 
ensure that the fuel you are injecting has been well purified by your purifier. And one of the ways to get it is in port when your engine is not running to keep purifying that oil through your purifier. And purifiers are, believe me, very good purifiers in the sense they remove a lot of dirt and sludge from the oil. So if you can feed your engine with a good clean oil, the combustion will be total. In other words, it will be complete. There will be no combustion debris at all. There will be no carbon formation, nothing. It will be very clean. So if you keep the parameters in good order, you will not have any clogging, any jamming, anything else. And the second thing is, you have to keep the air supply satisfactory. I told you 75 to 85% of problems arising in engines is the breathing problem, much like us, us human beings. If we can't breathe properly, all our bodily functions go for a six. Similarly, for an engine, if the breathing is imperfect, the engine will be imperfect in other ways. And then we'll wonder why, what happened? Why so much of carbon is happening? Oil is bad. It is not always oil is bad. It is possibly your air is not being given for it to burn completely. And that is mostly the cause, that the air supply is inadequate. Same thing for us human beings. Okay. Okay. Sir, if we reduce RPM of the engine, then we shall have to reduce lubricating. Yes, obviously. Uh, lubricating to cylinder, remember, not to the crankshaft or the system oil. System oil flow will remain the same, whether it is on part load or full load. But cylinder oil, yes, definitely you will reduce. And initially, there used to be a mechanism. The mechanism is, okay, you see the engine, I hope you have seen the one we have in our college. That is one of those old engines, but it has that mechanism. The lubricator, which injects the cylinder oil into, oh, we, we'll be doing it. We'll be doing it in time. We are coming to that, but you're jumping the gun. Before I go to the next, you're asking me already the questions on the next. Sir? I'll come to that. Uh, Rana, what is it? Sir, Karthik is speaking, sir. Karpe. Sir, sir, uh... Sir, I was asking if uh, suppose we are having debris in after combustion products of lubricating oil and it uh, uh, clogged the CPR and the engine is running on full load. In that case, uh, the excessive force will come on uh, the first piston ring. So how will uh, we treat them? See, CPR, you see, have you seen the slot on the side wall of the piston ring? It is just a trace. It is a, almost like a hairline slot. Okay. It is like a hairline slot. They may have two or maybe three slots. It is just a fine slot. And while it is rubbing, it will clear the passage. It's unlikely for that to happen. More likely is the piston grooves where the carbon will settle in. And carbon will settle in if your combustion is poor. If your combustion is satisfactory, there will be no carbon generation to cause blocking. And whatever little carbon blocking happens, the cylinder oil is expected to wash it, clean it out, and send it to the under piston spaces. From there, it gets drained out. So, so CPR will not have a problem with clogging where the slot is made on the sidewall of the piston ring. That is unlikely. It is a very fine line and the gas pressure is enough to blow out anything that will come there. That is not the place where the carbon will settle. Carbon will settle in the grooves where the piston ring is seated. The gap is more. Space is there for it to accumulate. But in the CPR, the slot is, you know, suppose I take a scriber and cut through one line on the surface. That is how thin that CPR ring has got the slots. Very, very fine. It's fraction of a millimeter, the slot. Okay, so let's go on to effects of reduced cylinder liner lubrication. If you have a less amount of oil going to the cylinder liner, what will happen? I think most of it is very obvious. It will promote wear of liner and the rings. Okay. If you reduce the RPM of the engine, we will have to reduce it. Yes, we will have to. Correct? 
We will have to, and it is automatic. You don't have to manually reduce the fuel lubricating oil. It is it is controlled through the fuel rack arrangement. The fuel rack arrangement will control the lever, which will regulate the quantity of cylinder oil going to the engine. So, how much fuel you put in, proportionate amount of cylinder oil will go in. If you reduce the fuel, the cylinder oil also will be reduced. Okay, Mrithun Joy, did you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, let's move on. So, effects of reduced cylinder lubrication promotes wear of cylinder liner and ring. That's obvious. Overheating of local area resulting in micro seizures due to lack of oil and consequent boundary lubrication. There you are. Now, where was that boundary lubrication question? Kartavya Singh. If you have low amount of oil being delivered, then you will have a problem. And there it is boundary lubrication. And moment you have boundary lubrication between the two surfaces, the surfaces start running very hot. And it becomes so hot that welding takes place not for the entire surface, but microscopic spots, they tend to weld with the hot surfaces of the other body. And then, because it is moving, it tears off. It welds at certain spots and then tears off. This process is called scuffing. S-C-U-F-F-I-N-G. When two surfaces are rubbing hard against each other and there's a lot of heat generation, in spite of some amount of oil being there, which is actually boundary lubrication, the surfaces will tend to weld with each other. And the entire welding doesn't happen. It happens at only spots. These spot welding takes place and it tears off. So the whole surface gets cored. This whole surface getting damaged is called scuffing of cylinder liner. Means it is momentary welded at spots and then torn off. Okay. Okay. Next is consequently major damage to piston rings and cylinder liner. See what low amount of lube oil can do. If you give less lube oil, major damage to piston rings and cylinder liner will result. Next is increased blow pass. Obviously, if you have wear down of the surfaces, there's going to be more blow pass. For one thing, it is worn out. Second thing, there is no oil seal. So increased blow pass is potential for scavenge fires with related damage to the engine as a whole. So you will have a major damage to the engine as a whole. And if you have a scavenge fire, you are in deep trouble. Why? Because if the fire is very severe and it takes you a long time to stop that fire, the whole engine might become a scrap. A scrap, a heap of scrap. Why? See, when metals are heated, they go through a sorry, they go through a little distortion. So if the scavenge manifold is having a raging fire inside, the whole engine on the side will get heated and overheated. So it will expand in places where it is not supposed to expand. So there'll be distortion. And then when the fire dies down, it may or may not, most likely it will not come back to its original position. So once it is distorted, the whole alignment of the engine is gone haywire. So each time when you start firing the engine, some bearing or some other surface will start overheating and it will wear out. So the whole engine becomes a scrap heap. So it is best not to have that engine subjected to unusual temperatures at any place, scavenge fire being one of them. So avoid a scavenge fire at any cost because a scavenge fire will not only distort the engine, it could be the cause of a crankcase explosion. Moment you have a scan, ca scavenge fire, it is usually in the vicinity of the under piston spaces. And at the under piston spaces, if you have a raging fire, then the diaphragm and the piston rod stuffing box also gets heated. So that becomes a hot spot for the crankcase oil, which will be in a contact with it to start forming a mist and thereby a consequential crankcase explosion. So a scavenge fire can lead to a crankcase explosion. Okay. Next, grade of oil use. What is the oil used inside the cylinder oil for the cylinder oil? The oil used for cylinder lubrication 
number 36 there is 36 oh i see i see one minute cylinder lubrication uh, oh, how did we miss this reduce okay let's see the effects of excess cylinder lubrication. good divakar tripathi my salutations to you you caught on you're alert right i love that okay effects of cylinder lubrication fouling of ring grooves and resulting of ring zone deposits obviously see the oil is coming into an area where it is very hot and you give more oil more of carbonization will take place the oil will not be moving out it will be there all accumulating there in a region which is very very hot in the very close to 200 degrees centigrade so there will be some amount of fire fouling or carbon deposit or sludge like formation within the piston rings resulting in ring zone deposits that means all along that piston pack you will have deposits consequently loss of gas sealing effect and blow by follows fouling of scavenge space and scavenge fire follows also affecting the combustion process there will be a lot of lube oil coming and soot formation into the combustion spaces leading to breakage of piston rings the moment you start having carbon formation between the grooves the piston rings cannot move there is no scope for the piston rings to move and remember the piston rings are loose inside the groove so when the piston moves up and down the rings are supposed to come in and out depending on the diameter of this liner at that particular point so the rings are continuously moving in and out during the entire stroke of the piston now if you have carbon deposits heavily inside the grooves that is between the groove and the ring then the piston rings will get jammed they will not move and then what happens the rings start rubbing very hard against the liner so much so the heat generated is so intense that they start becoming red hot red hot and then once it becomes red hot the resistance to movement of that piston inside the liner is very severe so the engine starts stalling so the engine starts stalling stalling means stopping because the resistance to movement is so much and then it stops and it will stop with the piston near the tdc and that is the hottest region where the combustion chamber is so now under those circumstances if it has become red hot the piston ring piston crown and the liner they will all fuse into each other they become welded they become welded with each other and you have what is called a piston seizure this is what is a piston seizure a piston seizure is a condition where the piston rings the crown and the liner have all welded into each other because of multiple reasons basically because of overheating of that region and excess lube oil can cause such a situation over time there are other causes also it is not that the, this is the only cause in fact less cylinder oil will also cause a piston seizure very poor combustion will also cause a seizure there are so many reasons that malfunctioning of the piston rings can happen while it is working okay uh fouling association if you follow affecting combustion process leading to breakage of piston rings piston rings will also break once they get caught or they get jammed and they are moving see when it passes the scavenge port the edge of the ring is protruding out and it gets caught there and it breaks it fractures moment it fractures a piece of it may fall into the scavenge manifold because it will fall into the through the ports and then the piston goes down further to allow the scavenge air to come in so in the process of the scavenge air come in that piece will be blown on top of the piston crown all right moment it comes on top of the piston crown it will be hammering inside and then when it gets a chance through the exhaust valve or through the exhaust port it will be blown out i have personally seen small small pieces of piston rings in the exhaust manifold and i just couldn't imagine how they can come there but that is how it comes they break into pieces and then they come up okay 
Next is fouling of exhaust system and turbocharger. Turbocharger will not get the piston rings because the turbocharger inlet from the exhaust manifold is at the top. And before that, there is a grill. This grill is a quite a fine grill and no solid piece can go in. But if it does go in, the turbocharger is going to go. So it's very crucial. And uh, that's how it is. There is no chance of a piston ring piece going into that space. Okay, next is increase. This is the last line, which is a worry for the ship owner. The quantity of oil consumed will be larger. And cylinder oil is one of the costliest oil. I think it is second to synthetic oil. Synthetic oil is the costliest. Second costliest is cylinder oil. Okay. This one we did. So effects of reduced cylinder lubrication and effects of increasing, both are very damaging to the engine. And this is something you learned at the beginning of our lubrication chapter, that uh, the quantity of oil fed should be correct. That means choice of the lubricant and correct feed rate. This is a very basic concept in lubricating of machinery. Not too much, not too little. Both are equally damaging. There are times when some people think, or tail daldo, put more oil, it will be better. That's a very wrong concept. Very, very wrong concept. The You try to pacify yourself by thinking, if I give more oil, then lubrication will be much better. It doesn't happen that way. In figuratively also, it doesn't happen that way. Okay, grade of oil used. The oil used for cylinder lubrication in two-stroke engines is SAE 50, Society of Automotive Engineers. SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers. Absorb this permanently. Absorb this permanently. What is SAE? Society of Automotive Engineers. They are an American body which has the maximum research and you know, they formulate the quality of lubricating oils and much more. It is not only lubricating oil. They do for a lot of things. This is one organization. And a second organization is ASTM. You must have seen this quite often. ASTM. What does it stand for? American Society for Testing and Materials. It is not testing materials. It is testing and materials. So for testing, they have one separate department. And for materials qualifications, they have a separate department. All right. So SAE and ASTM are two organizations which have an important bearing on all of us engineers. We in India also have similar bodies. And one of them is BIS. What is BIS? Bureau of Indian Standards. Then we have ISI, International Standards, uh, ISO, sorry, ISO. For India, it is ISI. And for the international one, it is ISO, International Standards Organization. That means International Organization Standards, but they write ISO. All right. And they call it IOS, International Organization for Standards. When they write it, they write ISO. So Society of Automotive Engineers, it gives the grades of lubricating oils. And the grade used for cylinder lubrication is SAE 50. 50 is the grade which is the viscosity at a certain temperature. The oil further requires a base. That means an alkali con content. To neutralize the acidic component of the exhaust gases arousing out of the sulfur in the fuel. The strength of the alkali is indicated by the total base number which is TBN or more presently just BN. Forget about using the letter T. This was done in the past. Now it is history. Presently the term used is BN, base number with high sulfur content of 3 to 3.5 percent, which was a little earlier, two, three years ago, the base number is 70. So what does this 70 number mean? It means 70 milligrams of alkali in one gram of oil. 
do not forget base number 70 70 bn number 70 bn cylinder oil is being used what does it mean it means 70 milligrams of alkali in one gram of the oil okay that is how base number is defined 1028 oh we still have some time well, I have to finish this also. Okay. With high sulfur, okay. The crankiest system oil is generally SAE30 or SAE40. Mostly it is SAE40. Now, how do you decide between SAE30 and 40? All the ships that I've been on, the crankiest oil was SAE40. But there are ships which will have their main engines moving at a little higher RPM than usual. So the manufacturer will have recommended SAE 30. Auxiliary engines I have had, they were also using SAE 40, but some of them had SAE 30. One of the reasons is the auxiliary engines were generally running at a little higher speed compared to the main engine. Now, the thumb rule is slower the speed, thicker the oil, higher the speed, thinner the oil. You understand? So the shaft is spinning very fast. The oil has to penetrate very quickly. So if it is a thin oil, that hydrodynamic lubrication can provide it with a film of oil much better if the oil is thin. But if the oil is thick, the shaft will rotate, but it will take time for that oil to be dragged underneath the surface. So it cannot use a thicker or a more viscous oil for a high speed machine. Okay. In your turbochargers, you do have bearings. Those bearings are sometimes ball bearings or roller bearings. Sometimes they are journal bearings. And ball bearings, roller bearings can take up very high RPM. So those bearings are sometimes lubricated by a separate oil tank. BBC, Brown Bovary Corporation, they have turbochargers which have their own oil contained in there. That oil is a little thinner than your crankcase oil. But then there are engines which are using Napier turbochargers. Those turbochargers, they have journal bearings. And there you can use your main engine lubricating oil for lubricating those bearings. So, turbochargers have bearings which can be ball bearings or roller bearings. It can have journal bearings, both. So, depending what the manufacturer has stipulated, you may use engine oil or you may have a separate oil contained in the bearing housing of those turbochargers. The bearings which are external, that means outside the rotor, they can be lubricated that way. What about the bearings which are on the inside? There also, there has to be a separate means of lubrication. Possibly you have done it with Mr. Das. So I will not go into the thick of it. Care must be taken not to allow the two oils to mix. In other words, cylinder oil and crankcase oil must not be allowed to mix. For that, you have the under piston, uh, sorry, you have the piston rod stuffing box, which must be in very good order. How do you find out if the piston rod stuffing box is not satisfactory. Divakar, this is a question to keep me awake. All right. It doesn't matter if you don't know. Divakar Tripati, how do you know while the engine is running that your piston rod stuffing box is not working satisfactorily? Divakar, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you got the question. The idea is yes, to keep me, me awake. I need to say. Otherwise, this monologue puts me to sleep also. Yes, so sir. what do you think? So what do you think? How do you, how will you decide that the piston rod stuffing box is not working properly? Give it a guess. It doesn't matter if you're wrong. This is only a class. Give it a shot. No idea. 
So no idea. Okay, I'll give you the hint. You see, crankcase spaces ideally should be at a pressure slightly lower than atmospheric. And for that, there is a breather pipe from the crankcase which goes up into the funnel. So whatever hot air that develops inside and vapor tends to go out of that breather pipe. So there is a natural draft created where the hot air goes out. So it leaves the pressure ideally at a pressure marginally lower than atmospheric pressure. But this will not happen if the piston rod stuffing box is leaking. The compressed air under the piston will start blowing into the crankcase. So there will be a pressure rise inside the crankcase. The moment you notice there is a significant pressure rise, you will know that some of the piston rod stuffing box are not sealing accurately. Isn't that a, a good means of identifying piston rod stuffing box function? Of course, you will not know which unit because all the entire crankcase is connected to all the units. The only way you can find out is after you open. After you open it out, how will you, okay, next part of the question. After you open the, I mean, the engine is stopped, you open the crankcase, how will you ask? You know that one of the two of them are leaking. That means the under piston spaces, uh, sorry, the uh, piston dot stuffing box is some of them out of the six, maybe one, usually it is one, is defective. So how will you find out which one is defective now that the engine is stopped? Divakar? Sir, uh, stuffing box, uh, sir, uh, binding springs, uh, may, uh, that might have broken. That, My that goodness. Also. So you're going to open out all the units, stuffing boxes, and it's a complicated job. There must be a simpler way of doing it to identify the defective piston rod stuffing box when the engine is stopped. Sir, the crankcase oil will be... Uh, move across upwards in the cylinder space and or the cylinder uh, oil will move down in the crankcase uh, via the piston rod. So how will you identify which unit? Sir, yeah. the unit which, uh, which uh, would have broken uh, uh, stuffing box rings, the, the oil would have, would have passed uh, in that unit. So the oil is not passing now, the engine is stopped. The turning gear engagement. How, how will turning gear engagement help you? So Come turning on, gear will thinking. The turning See? when we will engage turning gear. The, in that case, sir, the rods will be moving up and down. The sludge uh, the, in the under piston uh, spaces no, may get on. No, 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 no. It is your eyes and observation. All these machineries, you have to be very observant. Slight change you should be able to pick out. Of course, it will come through experience. What you will do is inspect all the six units and you climb up onto the crosshead where the piston palm is. And there you will see the oil is black, not the same as the main engine some point. So you will check all the units. The one that has got maximum blackening, it means from there the piston rod oil has come into that space. So it will be totally black. It will be completely different from the rest of the crankcase. Because it is a horizontal surface, whatever falls there will remain there. And that oil is thick, sticky, carbon deposits will also be there and you will make out. So that is the way you will identify which are. Maybe you will find more than one. Maybe one you will find very heavily done, other one only partly. It means this one's piston rod ceiling is very bad. That one is also bad. So you might as well do servicing of both of them. So that is one way to find out the function of, or rather identify which piston rod stuffing box is defective. Observe the palm of the piston rod, how dirty it is. It will be black. If it is black, it means that piston rod stuffing box is leaking. You get the point. These are important pieces of identification information in oral examinations, they will ask you, how will you do this? 
marine engineering practice will not ask you theoretical questions they will ask you things like that how will you know one piston rod stuffing box is leaking while the engine is running you will say that there is a possibility of crankcase pressure being much higher and if there is a manometer it will be indicative of that pressure usually it is not there but in some engines it is supposed to be there what happens really is it is there when it is new after that it breaks off fellows put a plug over there nobody is bothered to find out how much crankcase pressure is there and for the rest of the 20 years everything is painted over there so you come to believe that there never was a manometer only so that is what happened but usually crankcase spaces will have one manometer i hope everybody knows what is the manometer it's a u tube with water in it to continuously monitor what is the pressure inside the scavenge manifold and if the pressure is high the water levels will be different to a larger extent if the pressure is very marginal it will remain ideally it should be the opposite because the crankcase breather pipe is drawing out most of the air inside the crankcase so the pressure should be less than atmospheric but marginally it will not be a very severe amount and a manometer is the best means of indicating that you cannot climb up to see the vent pipe with anything coming out from there or feeling how much air is coming out from there that place is almost inaccessible if you go there nobody will recognize you after you come back that is the thing you will become black so that is how it is so let us go on to the next channel of oh, we are wasting too much time cylinder liner wear now we are coming into types of wear that is there there are basically two types of wear one is abrasive wear and one is corrosive wear some books will give you there are four types of wear one is abrasive wear one is friction wear one is scuffing wear and something is corrosive wear they will distort it so bus to make it easy to remember remember there is one which comes out of rubbing and one which comes out of acidic corrosion so these are the two forms in the abrasive correction friction is involved scuffing is involved i told you that they are rubbing against each other so these are all under come under abrasive wear friction and scuffing is included in abrasive wear abrasive wear occurs when abrasive particles enter the combustion spaces with scavenge air that means the dust in the air can go through into the combustion spaces during combustion and ultimately reach between the piston ring and liner or as a result of poor quality or contaminated fuel oil instances of extremely high abrasive rates can be caused by catalytic fines which are also called cat fines these are the products in residual fuel and they are aluminum oxide and silicon oxide okay so that is what is abrasive wear about corrosive wear this is the more common cause of cylinder liner wear caused when burning heavy fuel containing sulfur obviously sulfur dioxide during combustion this forms sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide uh, that is sulfuric and sulfurous acids in combination with the water vapor which is also a product of the hydrocarbon combustion fuel is a hydrocarbon so combustion of a hydrocarbon gives water and carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide this necessitates the use of alkaline lubricating oils for cylinder lubrication so this explains it well why do we use alkaline cylinder oil because the sulfur in the fuel will cause corrosion okay now i'll tell you something more right now the sulfur content is 0.5% okay and in the emission controlled area which is north sea europe north atlantic canada these areas you are supposed to use lesser sulfur fuel 0.1% should be the content of the sulfur in the fuel that is used there okay now when the ship is moving you are using 0.5% fuel 0.5% sulfur containing contained fuel okay now when you come close to european water 
you are expected to change over the engine to 0.1% sulfur content fuel. Okay. Not only is the fuel oil sulfur content has to be changed, you will also have to change the cylinder oil because the cylinder oil alkalinity must commensurate with the sulfur content of the fuel. So it is a big, big hassle, big hazard, hassle because moment you change over to 0.1%, it doesn't mean the engine starts getting 0.1%. The oil in the pipeline has to be consumed and then the 0.1% will come. So there is a time gap. Similarly, for the cylinder oil, when it will be changed over, it will also have to be changed after that time gap. So this is all computerized. No human intervention is required. So that all you need to do is press the button and from 0.5%, your fuel will change over to 0.1%. Of course, it will not happen instantaneously. There will be a time gap. Possibly a green light or a blue light will come up to show now that 0.1% sulfur fuel is being burned and your cylinder oil with the required alkalinity is being delivered. So these are all co more complicated matters on board the ship which you will have to master. My days are over. We used only one type of oil and one type of fuel all along. Even in Europe, there was no such thing as emission controlled areas during those times. Now there is. Now there is more restriction. And I feel over a period of time, the whole world will become an emission controlled area. And then further to that, there'll be after that, there'll be no hydrocarbon fuel will be allowed because the whole objective of reducing the carbon footprint is to stop using hydrocarbon fuel. What are the alternatives? You young minds will have to think out, formulate, generate ideas, put them into action, and change the world. Okay? It's up to you now. Clover leafing. This form, this form, I have to keep looking at the uh, uh, Chat column, just in case somebody puts up a remark. Okay. Clover leafing. This form of liner wear occurs when the alkali strength does not commensurate with the sulfur concentration in the fuel. Lower than the required level of BN will cause uneven wear along the length of the liner walls. The circumferential profile partly resembles a clover leaf but I think it resembles the profile of a sunflower. Everybody has seen a sunflower. Of course, it's exaggerated to say sunflower, more or less. Thing. Cause for collapse of ring and blow past. So what is this clover leafing? If the alkali in the cylinder oil is not matching with the sulfur in the fuel oil, you will have clover leafing. If you have excess alkali, that is also a problem. I will come to that. That is another problem. And if you have less alkali in the oil, that is also another problem. So it is very crucial to have the right strength of alkali in the cylinder oil when using a fuel with a specific sulfur content. Very important. You cannot have more alkali, more strength, or less alkali strength. It has to be the correct. Both ways, it is damaging to the engine. Let's see what happens in clover leafing. In clover leafing, what happens when the oil is delivered from the quill? Now, this is a plan view of the cylinder liner. Okay, we are looking at the cylinder liner from the top. So, the quills which deliver the cylinder oil, they are delivering at certain points depending on the diameter. If it is a very, very large diameter, then the number of points will be more. If it is a moderate diameter, the number of points will be less. But they are equidistant from each other. So when the oil is delivered from the cylinder liner, from the quill, the oil that comes first into the liner has got the required strength. 
it is 50 bn but the requirement is 70 bn so what happens so when the oil spreads and the gases react the initial part of the oil is protecting the cylinder liner over here but as the oil spreads further it does not have the alkali within it so there is no protection from the acid at a later stage so that is why corrosion takes place at this region and no corrosion takes place at the immediate exit of the lubricating oil from the quill so all around the cylinder liner where the oil has moved far from the quill the corrosion will be much more where it is just emerging from the quill it will have the alkali to neutralize the acid so it will not be worn out so this is what happens along the entire length of the cylinder liner this is a plan view and if you see the side view you will find strips of wear down and no wear down wear down and no wear down wear down and no wear down so once it, this thing happens then the gap between the piston ring and the liner is much more pronounced so there could be blow pass one and there could be collapse what is collapse of piston rings see when the gas is passing while having a blow pass it is putting pressure on the outside of the piston ring so the whole piston ring will be compressed into the piston crown and a bigger blast of air will take place more the bigger blast takes place more the pressure more the force to keep the king compressed in and that is called collapse of piston ring usually blow pass happen that way when the rings collapse there is blow pass so you must not give it a chance for the exhaust gas to come between the ring and the liner because if it does then the pressure will push the ring into the groove and then moment that happens a bigger blast of air will come in and keep the ring pressed in till the exhaust gas pressure reduces and then again the piston ring will come back into its position for the next uh, cycle again the same thing will happen so that is what is called collapse of piston ring the right hand side diagram shows the wear down of the cylinder liner i told you the wear down of the cylinder liner through the entire length of the liner is not the same right through in other words the cylinder liner is not cylindrical for the entire length perfectly cylindrical in talent there are places where the diameter is more less more less more so but which part has the maximum wear the part that has the maximum rubbing action under high temperature will have the maximum wear down and that is at the combustion ring belt this combustion ring belt what happens is the it is the, at the hottest temperature for one thing so the oil tends to evaporate over there so whatever little oil is there will provide the requisite lubrication now apart from this minimum amount of oil being there i told you 3 microns so apart from this the force by the piston ring on the liner is also at its maximum so when you force something and then drag it down there will be much more of wear and tear of the surface why is the force more because the gas pressure which occurs during the combustion chamber combustion period goes behind the piston ring and forces the ring against the cylinder liner and then the piston comes down it means the ring rubs hardest at the crop combustion belt now as the piston goes down the pressure also starts reducing so as it reduces the ring pressure on the liner also reduces so the wear and tear at the lower region of the liner is much less you see this line here it is indicative of how much wear down has taken place inside the liner a second place where a little more wear down takes place is near the ports you see especially the exhaust port over here they have shown only one exhaust port so this exhaust port the oil part of oil what is there on the surface tends to get blown out from there because the rushing exhaust gases will draw out some of the oil on the surface so there again the piston ring will have a tendency to make very close contact with the liner causing a little more wear than the rest of the part of the liner so the lubrication at this region is a little inferior 
compared to the lubrication of the liner somewhere in the metal. So you see this line over here is indicative of how much wear has taken place at the combustion belt. And there again, down below, it has how much taken place just above the exhaust port. Okay, so that is your thing. Bore polishing. This is the next part of a subject. Bore polishing arises if the alkali strength is more than requirement. That means, just now I spoke to you about improper quantity of alkali in the lubricating oil will cause clover leafing. Now, excess amount of alkali in the oil will cause bore polishing. Okay. Bore polishing can be caused other reasons also. And the other reason is if their air filter is not perfectly all right, then what happens? Very fine dust comes in. And it will be trapped between the piston ring and liner and the polishing will take place. <coughs> what happens is in the combination of powder, oil, piston ring and liner, when they are rubbing against each other, the surface becomes smooth, almost like mirror surface. So the moment it becomes very smooth, it will not retain any oil. So when the piston ring goes over it, it will be dry. There will be no oil. It is required to have a little matte surface, a little rough surface, which will help to retain the oil film on that fall. Okay. This arises if the alkali strength is more than requirement. Then, the, then deposits of calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate, sulfate on the top land will, oh, oh, I'm very sleepy will cause the salts to reach the spaces between the top ring and liner. This is a fine abrasive and will cause polishing of the liner surface, thereby reducing ability of surface oil retention. Enhanced wear down with blow pass will result. Anti-polishing rings are used for prevention of such wear. These are also called piston cleaning rings. All right. So the alkali inside the sorry cylinder oil, this separates out if there is excess amount in the heat. Part of the oil burns out, but the salt will not burn out. So the salt separates out and it settles on the surface of the piston crown top land. Top land is a circumferential belt above the piston ring, but below the piston top edge. So this surface will get a deposit of calcium carbonate and calcium sulfate. Over a time period, as this accumulation increases, it will start breaking off or falling into that space between the liner and that piston on top of the top piston ring. And from there, this powdered form will reach into behind the piston ring and with a little bit of oil, it will form the polishing. It will start polishing the liner. Okay. This as a fine abrasive will cause polishing of the liner surface. Oh, anti-polishing rings are used to, for prevention of such wear. These are called piston cleaning rings. Now, anti-polishing rings, what do they do? They block that space where the deposits take place. So no deposit can take place. They are like, they occupy the space which the deposits want to occupy. So it prevents any deposit. So if there is no deposit, then nothing will fall in the between. So if nothing falls in between, there will be no polishing of the bore of the cylinder liner. So here is the diagram to show you how the anti-polishing ring is fitted between the liner and the top land of the piston crown. Right now, the piston is not in the TDC because they are showing a little bit of a gap here. At the TDC, the, the anti-polishing ring, what you see here, will be very close to the top ring groove. So what happens is this space is blocked by the anti-polishing ring. And this anti-polishing ring is also called carbon scraper ring because it is not only the salt that deposits, also carbon deposits. Carbon also is a very fine powder, 
and in the presence of oil will form the smoothing or polishing medium how does the ring look like okay what you see right side is the anti polishing ring it's a simple ring if it was a small diameter you could put it on your finger but it's a large diameter okay so this is what it is in the next diagram a better diagram is shown how the anti polishing ring is fitted in place and it has completely blocked the passage between the piston and the liner above the top piston ring so there is no chance of any deposit to take place but there is one hazard the hazard is if the alignment of the piston is not proper with the anti polishing ring then the piston crown could bang onto that anti polishing ring and damage the diagram on the right side is shown as deposits between the pistons this is the deposit that happens and over a time period it will start falling and then get into this space here <clears throat> okay i hope it is very clear i don't think it requires more explanations the importance of lubricating oils the most essential fluid that is used in an engine is the lubricating medium the oil the engine oil is the main lubricant that plays a vital role in the engine cycle viscosity is the most important property of the lubricating oil vital functions of the oil are as stated below this is a repetition of what i have told you before so let's read it through the engine oil reduces the friction among the parts of the engine at various stages of the combustion cycle reducing wear and tear of the internal parts of the engine the engine oil performs the vital role of cleaning the sludge from the engine block which would otherwise result in a possible blockage oh my god we got lots the engine oil helps neutralize the acids that are released at any stage of the combustion process from the fuel and oxidation of other lubricants the engine oil also has anti corrosion abilities which prevents the cylinder block from getting corroded okay the engine oil carries away the heat generated between running surfaces and keeps components cool this is the same thing that was given in short at the beginning you don't have to mug up this but you remember those seven points which are there engine oil grades now this is an important one i think we'll call, call it off now because i will i don't want to be in a hurry so next class what we will do the remaining part of this multi grade oil then mono grade oil this is an important part so i don't want to rush it through so we will do this and we'll finish it and go on to medium speed engines we will complete part of that subject also so as of now this will be your last page page 46 is your last and we will start with engine oil grades so we will remember kartik next class 47 we will start with okay yes sir okay so that will be all for today i don't want to rush the remaining 7 or 10 pages or 9 pages and just for the heck of finishing it off i want you to absorb the subject because this lubrication of machinery is of crucial importance as you grow into your senior years you will see you are focusing more on the quality of the oil within that machine because that is what keeps that machine in good order and less and less problems will be shown to you if you maintain that lubricating oil in good order now let me take the attendance i hope everybody is there 38 wow how come i thought two of them are withdrawn cadets they have also come in i don't mind but it's good this is section c section c is supposed to have 38 and section c has got how many withdrawals two so 36 wow 100% attendance wow that's great excuse me sir yes yes what is it go ahead go ahead sir uh, please share the ppt with us sir please take the sir ppt sir i can i can understand understand So I am telling, sir, please share the PPT with us, sir. Tickety, tickety. 
Kundan, I am not able to follow you. Sir, I am asking for PPT, sir. What is PPT? Sir, this material, sir, presentation material. Oh, PPT. Yes, PowerPoint sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, I'll give it to you. Yes. Okay. What about the attendance? One sec. Seven, eight. Where is seven, nine? Seven, nine is withdrawn. How come all the numbers are not there? One minute. This is section C. Eight, eight, zero, eight, nine. And 8092. These are the two withdrawn. Okay, might as well take the attendance. Section C. Section C is got. Okay. It starts from um, 78 to 117. Okay, 78. Where is 79? 8079. Missing. 8182. Among Shu Mukherjee, what's your number? 8084, sir. So 8083 is missing. 83 is missing. Okay. So 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Jayant Kumar, what's your number? Gorai? 8090. 8090. So 89 is missing. 89 is, I think, at, uh, yeah. Okay, no problem. He's withdrawn. Uh, 90. 91929 is missing. Okay. Nine, sir, 93 is there. Sir, 92 is missing. Sir, 93 oh, is there. Oh, oh, sorry. 92 is missing. Good. You're alert. It's a way of finding out if you're alert or not. Okay. So, 92 is missing. 939495. Karutharan, you're 95? Yes, sir. 95. Okay. 969798 100 okay and one uh kundan kumar sharma you are on 102 okay three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen okay so the absentees and uh, putting uh, uh, putting up here eight zero seven nine eight zero eight three eight zero eight nine and nine two nine two is actually uh withdrawn and eight nine is also 89 is also withdrawn. The only two fellows are missing, 8079 and 8083. So anybody have any idea why they are missing? Are they sick or any problem they are having? Nobody knows. Okay, Kundan, you find out about these two boys because now we are getting letters from the 2019 entry batch. One boy has got COVID. And he has sent us the report also. But he has said he is feeling very weak. He is unable to attend online classes. It becomes so weak. It's very painful to hear this. So you fellows better be very, very careful. Follow the rules. You don't feel brave that I can walk out of my house without a mask. And now I am using a double mask to protect myself. So you have to be extra careful on this second Wave is worse than the first wave. How long it will continue? Nobody knows. We have not yet reached the peak. And it's 4 lakhs every day. 4 lakhs plus. So until that peak comes down, unless the isolation is there, nothing can help. So be very, very careful. Moment I hear a student has got COVID, it is very, very painful. Because that fellow, it's affecting everybody. Even youngsters. So now it has begun. When you will get vaccination, God only knows. We don't know. So that is what it is. So be very, very careful. Stay safe more than anything else. All the placement, placement have 